All right, we're live. Let's see what I have on my radio. I'm in my car. Oh, I don't like that. Um, let's see. Push this button. I actually like classical music. A lot of people don't know that I was classically trained as a violinist. And they tried to do voice. <laughs> At least I'm not tone deaf anymore. And it was really bad. Oh, what is this? That's not it either. All right. One of my kids is in rehearsal. Ha, huh, this is good background music, right? So we're going to do political musings. And I kind of like how the brand of Trump is falling, like the dollar. No, I don't like that the dollar is falling, but if you look at the quality of the Trump brand, it's being decimated. And decimated is a good word. Let me tell you why. Back in Roman times, we go back in times, <laughs> cue the harp, when Rome would conquer a country or a province, they would have all the other provinces, the other countries, troops there, and every 10th regiment, they would kill everyone in that regiment. That's what they meant by decimated. I kind of see the Trump brand being like that, like every 10th Trump brand, be it the hotels, who wants to have a convention at a Trump hotel? I ask you, who would want to stay there? What would the your colleagues think if you had a, a I mean, it just seems to be nothing but wrong. And I was listening to something earlier and they said the Trump shirts are $80. No one's going to pay that much with the, the name of a, a Trump man who I mean, he doesn't even ask you before he gropes you. I mean, think about it. That's a sexual predator. You know, um, like Bundy, the serial killer. Would you really want to wear a shirt that had his name on it? And I think it's right to compare the two. You know, the only difference between Bundy and Trump is that Trump has never been prosecuted. Has he been, has he been caught? Yes. He definitely has been caught. But he hasn't been prosecuted. So I just wanted to talk about the Trump ban brand and how it's being decimated. And to me, that's a good thing. You know, I think he should have thought twice before doing this. Because he's been so outlandish, so out there. You know such a person that would bully others. I mean, look what he did to Rosie O'Donnell. Even if you do not like her, it just went too far all the time. And who wants a president that's up at three in the morning tweeting away? Can you imagine them trying to take away his Twitter account? That is what happens when you become a president. You, you I mean, um, Obama had a Blackberry that he loved to use. He had to surrender his Blackberry. And this is all in view of security, national security. But I don't see Trump, if he should be able to become president, see him surrendering any of his accounts. He does not want to lose control. But when you have to guide a country through good times or bad times, you know, tweeting at three in the morning is not usually recommended. Usually Hillary Clinton has someone else tweeting for her. There's different companies that you can write a series of tweets and they'll tweet one tweet every three hours of what you've written. You know, there's ways around this and I don't understand why they allow Trump to tweet. Well, your campaign manager is supposed to have some control over what's going on you got a client, you're a, let's say that you're a campaign manager, you got a client that will not listen to you. Why work for them? Why did they even hire you? You know, you hire someone to give you good advice, structure, guidance, you know, to get the ball rolling, so to speak, and then you don't listen to them? Because I can't imagine any, any campaign manager, and he's gone through a couple already, remember? I mean, maybe going through two or three could be normal, but not like this. Like there's these factions and they're fighting against each other. And it's kind of cray cray. If you ask me. But um, I don't know what it is with my eyes. Where did I do? Okay, there it is. 
I put some water on it. I just put some more water on it. Hopefully I won't spill too much, but, um, you know, maybe that's what, what's wrong with my eyes. It's just seeing too much Trump these days. It's affecting my eyes. I think that might be it. Um, you know, your eyes, uh, you should really pay attention to them. I had gotten a infection in my eye, believe it or not, and boy, I looked like a zombie. I mean, I really, and it was painful. You know, I had to sit in darkness for almost six weeks, it was, because the light, even a candle light, which is a low light, was too much. You need to take care of yourself. You know, if you're volunteering for a campaign, doing phone banking, maybe you're walking the streets. Maybe you are. We have some state questions in Oklahoma that definitely deserve some consideration. Like how Phil, or state questions 770, there's 778. They're wanting to make um, killing as a form of punishment for prison, capital punishment that is. Included in the Oklahoma Bill of Rights. I want you to think about that. The Bill of Rights. You had the right to be <laughs> killed. I mean, that, 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 that's insane. But that's Oklahoma. And may I announce that on the 15th, I think it is. Is it the 15th, ladies and gentlemen? It's the 13th today. That there's a day of prayer for the oil industry in the state of Oklahoma. Yes, you heard me right. Our fair governor... Fallon, or failing, as some people say, has decided that there'll be a day of prayer for the oil industry because it's in such dire straits. No, not our education, which is 49th in the nation. Nope. Not our rate of incarceration of females in Oklahoma, which is number one in the, the nation, and we're number one in the world. Congratulations, Oklahoma. <laughs> watching somebody walk their dog. Uh, the dog's walking him. It's kind of funny. Um, <laughs> but um, this Mary Governor Failing, who's had a number of plastic surgeries, I, I think her face has been, just been pulled too tight, too tight this time. Instead of praying for issues that are confronting Oklahoma that truly matter, like the earthquake, we have surpassed California and the number of earthquakes that we have now. You wouldn't think that of Oklahoma, but this is true. Just go look at the, any earthquake study site and put it in Oklahoma. You'll see all these round circles everywhere with varying degrees of severity. And it will tell you that Oklahoma is number one. But nothing for anything that we should be proud of. The reason why we're having all these various earthquakes and there's different types of earthquakes that we are having is because of the fracking industry of them pumping wastewater into the ground which that wastewater will make it into our drinking water because there's an aquifer under the majority of Oklahoma, Kansas, Nebraska on up all those the nasty wastewater is being pumped back down there and that's water that that waters the food that you eat and if you live in this area the water you drink and when that's empty there's no more you know along with Daffle you know on the Standing Rock Reservation it goes that pipeline goes underneath the Missouri River twice and this is an area that's also prone to earthquakes not as much as Oklahoma but you know give that that state some time they'll have fracking going like gangbusters just like Oklahoma does but to me I thought it was ridiculous that she wanted a day of prayer for the oil industry and uh, natural gas as well I mean, it's just nuts hello Cletus I have a chatter in the chat room I haven't tweeted to my Facebook but you know, the, my main thing, my p political musings are, is that Trump is going down. I mean, Titanic and Trump. And if you look at the picture, I don't know if you can read it or if you can get it larger. It talks about Trump 
and what it means and that was back in the 1400s how could they have known <laughs> so many years ago that one day there would be a name last name that was manufactured known as Trump and I do think he has a condition but that's just me I hope you can hear me Cletus let me know if you can't hear me I'll turn on this music I'm in my car waiting for one of the kids to get out of rehearsal so I take care of my kids so my kids like me and they do well so I'm very proud of them I feel like taking a nap, but that would probably look weird, wouldn't it? I'm in the parking lot. Goodness. So this is a new headset that I'm using now, so I didn't know if it was working correctly, because it was pretty inexpensive. So. And as far as Clinton goes, I think the majority of the nation has forgiven her for the emails. Because, I mean, they're not, I don't hear the uproar I heard back in the spring. You know, with the Bernie Nights and, you know, all that good stuff. Her emails. You know, then it's brought out that um, George Bush had 20 million emails that were erased. Now, they didn't say that was on a private server or not. But, honestly, some of these people, they just don't know what they're doing. And they should know. They should know to ask advice and I think she knows that now and she will not repeat that process so and isn't she entitled to some privacy but I think at times she forgot herself and you know it wasn't wedding stuff it was uh, national security items and there was no reason for her to use that server in my opinion but I think America can get past that I hope they can what would the country look if it was Trumpified? Trumpified United States. What would it look like? Would he just cut off funding to the inner cities and have them do survival of the fittest? I think he might. He'll think it's unnecessary. He'll think a lot of programs are unnecessary because he's out of touch. He doesn't know what a real person's world is like. He's never had that experience even as a child. You know? No, I thought I would just do a short podcast. It's only been about 12 minutes. Just my thoughts on the matter. You know, and if you believed in Trump, it's okay. You can come back over. You can come over to the other dark side. <laughs> the dark side with a plan that will work for America. You know, I know a lot of people do not like Clinton. I'm not a big fan. I'll be honest. I'm not a big fan. But we have to agree that she is an intelligent person and that she has viable plans for America that you can find on HillaryClinton.com. You can find those plans and see if you agree with them. Don't take my word for it. Go look them up. You know, maybe it's uh, illegal immigrants that are your thing. I, I haven't heard that much about illegal immigrants lately. It's not such a thing anymore. The economy is. Education is. And infrastructure. I think that is a huge ticket item. I don't know how the roads are, or bridges are in your state, but in a number of different states, our, our roads, uh, we just can't handle the load anymore. There's so much riding on the highways. You have to update those and the bridges, especially. Now, recently in Little Rock, Arkansas, just yesterday, they blew up. I think it was called Hope Bridge, and they had to blow it up twice. It took them, what, 10 hours to pull the bridge down? They thought it was in such bad shape that it could not be used anymore, and they had to diamondite, diamondite it, and just, they had to pull at the legs of the bridge, and, you know, I think, I think of Hillary when I think about that bridge. That she's tougher than she looks. And we need someone that's tough in office. And that will make those hard decisions. And have the knowledge and experience backing that person up to make those said decisions. She's ready for office. Whether you agree with her or not, 
on different policies, you can rest assured that she is ready, that she knows the policies. You may not agree with her decisions, but she knows the policies. She knows the procedures. You know, now she knows not to use a private server, and she apologized for it. Yes, um, someone's in the chat room. What is that? Yeah, they had to diamondize. <laughs> I can't talk sometimes. It's getting a little chilly out here. True, it's getting chilly. Really? Sounds like someone's a little jealous. White. Oh, you're talking about Cletus? I know that's Mr. White. I don't have a problem with him. I don't. I'm going to turn this music up. We'll have a small break. going on with um, different people here at Spreaker that are ill, but please keep in mind the Spreaker and iHeartRadio host known as Desert Rose and Spreaker host known as Kings of Talk. They both are recovering. <laughs> I'll do whatever I please. I'll delete your comments if I so choose. Someone's telling me not to delete the comments or... I guess ban them. I didn't think about that. You know what? I can do it. Not a big deal. Do you want to say goodbye? I don't know what that stands for. D O A F. D-O-A-F. Did you mean to say both? That's what you meant? Of course. Let me go over here. Click on this. Ooh, my eyes. Bright lights are not my friend right now. Click on that. 